When you start adding tools like Advanced Custom Fields, Metabox, and so on to your WordPress website, one of the things you're going to want to do is create custom post types and all those kinds of good things and add additional data in. The problem is WordPress, the database structure and so on, isn't really the most optimized. It's kind of one of those things that as your data grows, it leads to slower websites. And if that grows exponentially, well, you kind of get the idea of what can happen. This is where a feature inside Metabox, I want to take a look at that today. This is going to allow us to take data that we create in meta fields, create their own dedicated tables and put that data inside there. This can lead to a 75% reduction in the amount of information being stored. WordPress itself likes to create four records for basically every record you include. Using this method allows us to create one record for it. But we still retain the flexibility of being able to add taxonomies and so on. Let me show you how you set this up, show you what it does inside the database and kind of give you a feel for how it all works. So if you're looking for a way of streamlining your data, speeding up your website with large amounts of data, this may be a solution for you. Let's take a look and check it out. The function itself is called MB Custom Table. It's one of the add-ons as part of the pro version of Metabox. You are going to need to have that and have it installed. If you install the all-in-one Metabox, this will install that for you and generally have it activated. If you're not sure, simply come into your dashboard, come into Metabox and down into Extensions. And inside there, you're looking for the option that says MB Custom Table. Make sure that's enabled, which like I said, generally it is by default. Choose save and you've got the options set up. So now let's create a new custom post type. You don't have to do this because this only works with meta fields anyway. So you can associate meta fields with anything you want, whether that's an existing post or page type, whether you want to create a custom post type, user information, those kinds of things. I just want to show you how this works and how you have control over various aspects of it. So first of all, let's quickly create a post type. We'll call this one estate agents. It's not really that important, but it's an example. Coming to advanced, all we need to do, set these options up that I want to use. Doesn't really matter again, like I say, I'm just setting the basic options up. Support, yep, looks good. Taxonomies, we don't want to use any of those at the moment. And features, yep, all good. So we'll create this new custom post type. So before we move on, if we take a quick look at the database table, we can see that at this point in time, there's nothing inside you for that estate agent option. You can see we've got one for property and that's a custom table I've created, but nothing for those estate agents. So let's go and see how we actually create the table and connect everything up. Let's add some custom fields to this post. Now I'm using the version five editor you're not going to see this if you're watching this right now. I've got a video on this if you want to check it out, which you can take a look at here and in the description. So this is a new editor. Again, not important for what we're going to do here. It'll work with either. So what we're going to do is, first of all, before we add any kind of fields in, we're going to come up with the option that says custom table. And inside there, we can say save data in a custom table. We'll select that. You can set it to auto create the table or you can give it its own dedicated name. We'll call this estate agents. We can include a prefix if we want to. We can select that option and it'll add a prefix in and we can say auto create the table, which will set the table to create all the columns set as text. So if you wanted to have control over the actual content, you may have text, numeric information and so on inside there. You will get better results by doing this manually. However, I'm going to say for ease, we'll just auto create the table. So now let's just add a couple of fields in. It doesn't really matter what they are. We'll add a text field in. We'll add another field in. And a WYSIWYG editor in there, again, doesn't really matter. There we go. We say we're happy with that. And we'll click on Publish. So we've now created a couple of meta fields associated to those with the new custom post type and also told it we want to create a custom table to contain this information. So let's go back into the database. And now we'll see we've got this new entry called Estate Agents. By saying the prefix, you can see it's put in the prefix that's going to be applied as part of the settings in your config. Whereas in this example, I didn't do it. So you can see, if we click to open this up and select our data, there's currently nothing inside there. So let's go and add an estate agent in, and then we'll see what happens here, and we'll see how this connects everything up into the relevant parts of our overall database. Okay, I've added some basic info in, we'll click on Publish. So we've now added our first estate agents. Come back out, there you can see it's all set up. Now if we go back into our database, 
we now have one new entry inside here. The entry is the name of the person and the agent's bio, but you can see all that's been pulled in here are the custom fields that we've created, which is the agent's name and the agent's bio, and it's given it an ID. That ID connects it to the post, the normal WordPress post, but all our meta field data is gonna be stored in here and not have it duplicated in multiple places. So for example, now if we go back and take a look at our posts, scroll down, there you can see there's entry 46, which is is the post we just created. And you can see what this has done is it's pulled in the basic title for the actual post itself. It's pulled in the content of the post and also featured images connected up as well. So now we have only one entry for those custom meta fields and one entry inside here. So this does streamline the overall database. There's also data in other places inside things like the term meta and so on. So there's, there's bits of information dotted around. But by using this method, we separate that custom meta information, put it into its own table. So if you were using this to create orders, for example, you can put your orders inside you and have that separate. The beauty of this means that when you want to search, you are searching less records to find the same amount of information. Ultimately, that is gonna speed things up. It would be negligible on a smaller site, but when you start to grow a site that maybe have tens of thousands of records, you may find that things start to slow down, especially when it comes to searches and things like that, and filters. So this is one way of being able to do it natively inside Metabox. To do this inside something like Advanced Custom Fields, you need to buy an additional plugin from another company, which does something similar, but it's a little bit more technical. Um, results, I don't know, I haven't tested it out. But this for me is one of those things that this is one of the kind of key things that people level at using things like advanced custom fields and Metabox and so on. Is it going to slow your website down? Ultimately, yes, but you can control how much by being able to work smart by having data separate out into different tables and reducing the amount of redundant data that has to be filtered, sorted, and searched. Now you can find out more about how this works and what you can do with it by taking a look at the link in the description about the MB custom table plugin and this will give you all the information. But to give you a quick example, we're talking about WooCommerce. So imagine if you run a flower shop and you have 20 orders per day, WordPress will store 20 times 40, 800 rows in your database. After one month, it'll be 30 times 800 or 24,000 rows for just 600 orders. You kind of get the idea how much data you can store by something simple like this. Moving it out is a good way of working. So check it out, have a look for yourself if you're a Metabox user or you're looking for a tool that allows you to create custom fields and have this functionality built into it, you may want to take a look at using Metabox. Link to everything is in the description down below. If you want to find out more about that new interface that's coming, check out this video next. As always, my name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.